So I want to start today by talking about what's happening out there. What's the most popular stuff we're seeing? And many of you see the same thing. We see vaping, we see marijuana use, we hear about things like, uh, you know, CBD oil that's out there, and we want to talk about it. But I want to take you kind of on a little journey to see how we got to where we are. Because the things that you think are not dangerous probably are. Many of you, whether yourselves or your parents or your grandparents, grew up smoking cigarettes. And back then, they, the makers of tobacco were saying it's not addictive and the nicotine's not addictive and they tried to make us believe that. And many of our family members became major smokers, majorly addicted. Many of our relatives probably died from diseases of the lung or the heart, respiratory problems from smoking. And now over the last 30 years, we've started realizing how addictive nicotine is. And that's what is in the cigarette. It's made up of two parts. You've got nicotine, which is the addictive part. And then you have the chemicals, which we call carcinogens, which are the part of the cigarette that give you cancer. So for years and years, we've been trying to get people to stop smoking. If you've ever tried to stop smoking, you realize it's hard. It's one of the more addictive drugs we know of. Very difficult to stop on your own. So as a nation, we said, well, what's most important about getting people to stop? Is it the cancer or the addiction to the nicotine? And scientists and the government back then said, well, we're more concerned about the cancer because that's what actually kills them, even though the nicotine is what gets them addicted. So they started on a campaign many years ago to try to get people off cigarettes by using other nicotine products. You may all remember nicotine gum or the patch, the nicotine patch that goes in your body. Now, what these are, are literally pure nicotine. The idea was that if we keep you addicted to the nicotine, but you transfer that addiction to the gum or the patch, then you won't have to smoke and get to carcinogens. That was the idea. Looked good on paper, sounded pretty good, but it wasn't really that effective. People seemed, when they smoked cigarettes, to enjoy having that cigarette. They liked having that, that oral sensation of having a cigarette in their mouth when they used it. So to, to, to use gum or a patch didn't, didn't seem really work well. And a lot of people did not stop, or if they stopped, they started again. And so they went back to the drawing board several years ago, probably close to 10 years ago, and they said, well, let's give them what they want. If they have an oral complex, meaning they need that cigarette in their mouth, let's give them the cigarette in their mouth, but also just make it nicotine. And first thing that came out, some of you may even remember seeing these in, in gas stations and 7-Elevens, was called the Enjoy, which were the first nicotine cigarette, electric cigarette. And that's what they called it, the e-cigarette. So this little product here is full of nicotine, and when you would inhale it, you would feel like you were smoking. And you would get that smoking sensation that made you feel good that you were smoking, and you got your nicotine fix, but you didn't get the carcinogens. Now, two things about this. One, people were using a lot of it because they're tobacco habits were pretty heavy, so they were using this a lot. Number two, they never bothered to look at what was the product inside that people were actually smoking. And that was a mistake that the FDA has looked into, and some of the chemicals in the early e-cigarettes were very, very dangerous. So we were defeating the purpose. But people loved this. They absolutely loved it. So once again, the, the 
makers of nicotine products went back to the drawing board and said, okay, now we've got these cigarettes, these electric cigarettes, how do we make it more attractive to teenagers, which is the market that the tobacco industry always wanted to capture. They then came up with this idea of taking the liquid nicotine and turning it into a bottle of liquid nicotine in different flavors. This one was called blueberry waffle. <laughs> this one is called peach. They have every flavor you can think of. And they came up with the nicotine liquid, they call it juice. And this juice was available, and then they came up with a product called a vaping pen. Now the idea of vaping is literally taking the liquid that you buy, pouring it into the vape pen. Inside of this has a heating system that melts the liquid. And you might see there's a light that goes on that heats up the system that melts the juice. Then when you inhale, you're inhaling or vaping the vaporized liquid nicotine. Oftentimes when you see people vaping, what do you see? Giant puffs of smoke. You say, what are they smoking? Lots of giant puffs of smoke. That's because they're literally smoking the vapors. And that's what they get by these vaping products that are out there. Now, when this started off, it became a pretty big industry. And the next thing we knew, there were vape stores opening up all over the country, selling these products in all these flavors and all these gadgets. These are all vaping pens that are out there, vaping gadgets. Some are as cheap as $30 and some are as expensive as two, $300 to get these. And you'll see people walking around with a bigger one like this and they'll hold it in their hand and they'll start vaping. Now, again, this got to be super popular with everyone, adults and even teenagers. But they went a step further when it came to our kids. And that is they came up with a device that nobody had ever heard of before. Now everybody, if you have a teenager or a young adult son or daughter, ask them about, let me get that, ask them about the product Juul. Juul is the hottest item ever made in the tobacco history. 80% of the vaping market is Juul. And every kid has one, whether they vape or they don't. It's the cool thing to have. It's what they have. Now, what is a jewel? These are jewels. Look at them. It looks like a flash drive that would go in your computer. And they actually can go in the computer to be recharged. But you come up to your child and you see they've got this flash drive in their computer and you go, oh, good, they're studying. Meanwhile, they're charging their jewel. And every kid has had a jewel. This caught on so fast, so big. They make them with a pack. And these little containers have these cartridges that go in the top of the jewel. And then they just hold it in. They can hide it in their hands and then just start what they call jeweling and smoking. They are literally. Talk to the schools that your kids go to. They are now watching kids walking the halls, vaping, doing a jewel. All the bathrooms, like it was back in the 1970s, are all locked. All the doors are off the bathroom because all these kids are jeweling. And here's the gadget. Here's the real sad part. They come in flavors, just like the bottled liquid. The difference is this cartridge is equal to a pack of cigarettes worth of nicotine. Now, if you're a teenager or an adult 
You could, you could do the whole thing, inhale the whole thing in minutes. That's a pack of cigarettes worth of nicotine. So Juul became the hottest item. Now, because of all this, the government started cracking down on vaping for kids and the flavors, especially the flavors for the kids. And the FDA finally, after years, stepped in and they started banning many of the flavored liquids and also the flavors that are in the Juul. They still allow them to sell a standard Juul, which is just a tobacco flavor, and they can still sell liquid uh, uh, nicotine to the, for a regular flavor, but they did away with the flavors, thinking that would solve all the problems. However, they made a mistake in the law, and they left a wide open gap, the FDA. And what they left off were what we call disposable vapes. I'm telling you, they're always one step ahead of us. This is a disposable vape. What's it look like? It looks like a jewel, right? It looks like a jewel, and it comes off, and you're ready to go. And it has a flavor, right? Obviously, this is great because it's purple and blue. And then they have other ones. These are all individuals called disposable. Again, they contain about a pack of cigarettes worth of nicotine, and when you're done with it, you throw them out. And the law allows for that. So once again, they're one step ahead of us when it comes to these products. So these disposables are all over the place. Once again, kids have them. Once again, they're vaping. And you have to understand when we talk about vaping, while it seems kind of innocent or a better option to tobacco because it doesn't have the carcinogens, these vaping oils contain chemicals that are very, very powerful. You know, names like polyglycamine, you know, embalming fluid is in there, and a lot of other terrible things because the FDA does not regulate the product. Now you have to hear, I'm going to say that several times during these presentations. The Food and Drug Administration does not regulate the vaping industry. They did regulate about the flavors, but not about what's in the liquid or in the disposables. And that's important. They should regulate it, and we're trying to get them to do that because the kids are still doing it, and so are adults at an astronomical level. But you have to remember, this is nicotine. You can't take too much nicotine. You can actually overdose on nicotine because it increases your heart rate. It increases your pulse, your blood pressure. And you sit there and do a whole jewel, it becomes extremely, extremely dangerous. So as you look around and as you talk to people about vaping, what is vaping? Literally, it is literally heating up the liquid oil or heating it up in a disposable product that does the same, that melts, that melts the liquid and creates a fume, a vapor. And that's vaping. And while we were so excited about the potential, we're now trying to get people to rethink their use of vaping Relook at it. Now, whether it's tobacco, that kills about 400,000 people a year, regular tobacco, or vaping, we were in the midst, we're going through the coronavirus, and the one thing that every doctor says, because this is a virus of the lungs, that if you're a smoker, if you're a vapor, if, you, if you're smoking marijuana, you're increasing the damage to your lungs and to your heart, thus making you a high-risk candidate for COVID-19. And that's really the reality of what we're dealing with. So if you haven't stopped smoking, you should try.
We're now trying to provide programs for kids to stop vaping without taking any kind of medicine, any chemicals. It's difficult. Nicotine is a powerful, addictive drug. Don't forget that. Through all this, don't forget it, how powerful it is. And if you haven't stopped smoking, you should. You know, we teach our kids in third grade, fifth grade not to smoke, and many of them are worried about mom and dad. Now, if we take a leap over here, when we talk about vaping, and we're leaping over to, you've heard in the news in the past six months about a lot of people who were dying of vaping and no one could figure out what it was. Literally dying of a lung disease. They would show up in the hospitals, they would show up in emergency rooms, they'd run to their doctors, that their lungs were burning up. And they found out that yes, they were vaping. They were vaping, but what were they vaping? They weren't vaping the liquid vapes, nor the jewel. They were vaping marijuana. That's what they were vaping. And you sit there and I'm like, here's an ounce of marijuana. And you go, well, how do you vape the leaf? How do you, how do you vape, it's, you know, you have to, it's not a liquid. How do you do that? Well, what they figured out was how to turn the marijuana into a liquid oil. And what they did was they would soak the marijuana in vegetable oil. The vegetable oil would absorb the marijuana and you end up with what we call pot oil. And you can actually buy pot oil in the schools, at the schools, you can buy it on the streets, literally ready to go. So now you have an oil that's made of marijuana and now you get out your vaping pen and instead of putting the liquid oil that was nicotine, you now have pot oil that you can put inside of your vape pen. So a lot of times when you see people vaping, how do you know are they smoking pot or are they just vaping the oil? And the reality is you don't because the smell that we all know when we hear about marijuana does not come through in the vaping, but it does create that giant puff of smoke. And so vaping of marijuana has become really, really popular. Now, follow me on this. The liquid that became pot oil was very thin, meaning when you put it in your vape pen, it absorbed really quickly and it just disappeared because it went up in vapors. And so they needed to find another way to make liquid pot without using the vegetable oil. And so they decided to use vitamin E oil, right? We've all seen vitamin E oil. Oh, it's good for your skin. You get vitamin, o, uh, vitamin E pills. That's good for you as a vitamin, a supplement. But the liquid is really thick. So what they did was they took their marijuana and instead of using the vegetable oil, and we all know vegetable oil is cookable. You can cook with it. However, the marijuana and the vitamin E oil, vitamin E oil doesn't burn. It creates a toxic fume that when they were smoking the pot that was soaked in vitamin E oil, we started losing 10, 20, 30, 40, over 50,000 people in less than three months last year. It's all over the news, everyone was trying to find out. It was vaping, it was vaping. It was vaping pot oil mixed with vitamin E. And everyone kind of went nuts about it and we started a whole campaign trying to get people to realize don't smoke the pot from the street if you're buying something that's already mixed because it might have that vitamin E in it. And literally people were literally burning out their lungs because it doesn't burn. It's not vitamin, it's not uh, uh, cooking oil that you cook with, it's vitamin E oil. 
super toxic. So remember that. And again, let everyone know that that's kind of the new wave of what they were doing with the smoking of pot, the vaping of pot, which created a lot of people dying. Now that has cut down a lot because the word finally got out to the streets what they were doing. But it didn't stop the increased use of marijuana in general. Now, we've all grown up knowing about marijuana. Many of you watching this may have smoked marijuana. Some of you may still be smoking marijuana. Some of you may have done it when you were a kid in high school and college and thought nothing of it and you never went on to any other drug and you just, it was just something you did. Well, let me just tell you this. This is not the same marijuana that anyone used in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, up to 2010. It's not the same pot. What do you mean not the same pot? Marijuana pretty much grows anywhere in the world, except the North and South Pole. Depending on the certain climate, the marijuana will grow to be stronger. We measure pot in the psychoactive ingredient, which is called THC. You may have heard that, tetrahydrocannabinol. The THC in pot is what gets you high. The THC levels of marijuana, when I was using it in the 60s and the 70s, was probably about 12%. Today, it averages 35 to 50% THC levels. Levels that we've never seen before. There are some forms of marijuana out there that have gone up as high as 75 to 80% THC. It's unheard of. I have kids that I work with in several schools who would tell me that this new pot is so strong that they actually hallucinated from it. Never heard that before. We never heard that before. We're finding more and more kids who are getting addicted to marijuana within several months, where years ago that might take a year or two. This is a different type of marijuana. It is stronger, it is more powerful, and has way more side effects than anything any of us grew up with. And that's important. Because a lot of parents say to me, well, you know, I, I smoked pot when I was in school, and, you know, what's wrong with that? I'd rather smoke pot than drink. You know, that's what they say. And absolutely ridiculous. Marijuana is a fat-soluble drug. Follow me on this. Let me give you an example. Here's a can of beer. Alcohol is water-soluble. You drink this alcohol, it's out of your system in about 10 or 12 hours. Flushes right through, it's gone. Marijuana is fat soluble, meaning when you smoke pot, it soaks into the fat cells of the brain, the lungs, and the reproductive system. Soaks it in like a sponge. The THC that you're inhaling has a half-life in your body of 14 days. And that's how we usually track people and test people for marijuana. It'll stay in the system for 30 days. And we bust people all the time. Oh, I, didn't, I smoked two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Well, if you take a drug test, you're going to fail. it. But that THC soaks into the fat cells. So what does that mean? That means if you're a moderate smoker, three times a week or more, you're gonna get a buildup of the THC in the brain, the lungs, and the reproductive system. First thing we see is the effect on the brain. Many of you went to school with a student or you knew someone in the gang who was what? A burnout. And we all knew a burnout in school. How did they act? They were spacey, they were high all the time, they didn't think, they, you know, used to mess with them, they couldn't think quickly enough. And that's what's happening with this new marijuana. The burnout that it causes, inability to concentrate, short-term memory loss, lack of motivation. 
One of the things that pot does is it gives people tunnel vision. People say to me, I, I get into what I'm doing when I, uh, I'm smoking pot. I can study better. Well, what we know with pot is you might be reading a book, but you forget to turn the page. You've been on that same page for an hour because that's what it does. It slows you down. And you can't think straight. You can't think clearly. If you're driving a car and a baby or a dog jumps out, your reaction time is much, much slower. And that's important to know because with a much stronger marijuana, these are going to happen more frequently. And you're going to need less marijuana in order for this to kick in. So when we see kids who have what we call burnout, we now call it the A motivational syndrome from pot use. As I said before, instead of taking a year or two, it's happening in months. And you might be seeing that with not only your child, but you might be seeing it with someone you care about or a friend where they used to be very uh, uh, empathetic, they used to be really together, they had a lot of energy, they were motivated, and now all of a sudden they're kind of just lazy. They don't care very much about work. They don't care very much about school. And that's a side effect of this burnout from this new pot. It's almost like a super pot that's out there. And it's important to understand that the quicker we can get somebody to stop, the sooner we can get them help. But right now, the attitude in this country is very pro-marijuana, pro-legalization of marijuana. We already took the first step in most states in this country to medicalize marijuana. Now, let me just say this right up front. I don't know if marijuana has medicinal value. I know some people tell me, oh, it helped this, it helped that, helped my child, helped me. And then I go to the studies and I see what's coming out and it says, no, it doesn't fix all those great things that people think. So I don't know. So I'm not going to make a judgment. I'm for any, if a substance or a drug can help somebody and we can make it available and easy to use, nothing wrong with that. Problem is this. Marijuana for medicinal purposes. Now, every state you probably look at has medical marijuana. But you have to understand, once again, the Food and Drug Administration of the United States of America has not, say that again, has not approved medical marijuana. It's all been done by the states at the local level. Marijuana is still against the law on a federal level, but states are beginning to change their laws. And so as the marijuana is getting stronger, more deadly, more young people using it, at the same time that's happening, we're lessening the, the offenses for people that have it in their possession or their use, including driving, at the wrong time. That's my opinion. And I know, again, people may be watching this saying, I've got a friend, myself, I've used medical marijuana, it's helped. Terrific. All I'm telling you, it's not approved yet. And when the FDA does approve it, then we'll be able to guarantee that what you are buying is monitored, measured, and protected by the FDA. Right now, you go to a mar medical marijuana dispensary, you don't know what they've done. You're just assuming it's been monitored and checked, and it hasn't. We've seen problems with that in the past. So it's important to understand that it has not been approved. We also have a problem here of medical marijuana and regular marijuana now becoming available in a whole different form. States like California, Colorado, Washington State, the main way people are using pot is through what we call edibles. They're eating the pot. Candies, cookies, every product you can name now has marijuana, cannabis within that product. And they sell it. 
The problem with eating marijuana is it takes longer to take effect, about 30 minutes, versus smoking it maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, but it stays in the system longer. So a lot of people that get edibles will get a, a marijuana candy bar that has six blocks, like a Hershey bar, and go, wow, who's, at, who's eating one block of a Hershey bar? <laughs> you eat the whole bar. Well, every block is a dose of marijuana. And we're seeing this in hospitals, again, California, Colorado, all over, who are seeing people showing up in the ER overdosing on THC because of the edibles. And that's where we're going in some of the levels when it comes to medical marijuana. So we don't know what the future is going to be. But I warn you and I want you to be aware of what the kids are doing, what young people are doing, what anyone who's smoking pot. Certainly not using a vehicle, driving a car. To me, it's as bad as driving drunk. It's just a different form. So that's, again, my opinion and something that I see. Now, again, legalization is happening many different states, one by one, mostly because it brings in a lot of money. But the kids are also very much into drug paraphernalia. Now, I'm hoping you all can see this, but I want to show you a few. This is a highlighter, okay? A highlighter that everyone usually has. The bottom of the highlighter comes out and becomes a marijuana pipe. Can you imagine? You think your child puts it in their pocket like this and that they studied in school, <laughs> when in reality, they got a pot pipe in their pocket. And it comes in a magic marker as well. It's crazy, but these are available. And these are what people are using. Here's a red one. The bottom comes out. We also have something for the girls. Lipstick. I've got two lipsticks in my hand. One is a real lipstick, and the other is a marijuana pipe. Hard to tell. This one is real lipstick. This one is a marijuana pipe. How? It pulls out like this. And you got a bowl, just like that. They can have it that easy, that quickly. Uh, this is a faucet off of someone's house that a kid made into a marijuana pipe. And they were able to just take it, turn it upside down, and make a pipe out of it. This is the kind of stuff that they're doing. This is a bracelet, turns into a marijuana pipe. comes across, and you smoke out of the bowl. It's, it's the stuff that they're coming up with, this paraphernalia, and the kids have it. Remember I told you not to go through your kid's room. Maybe if you want to, you can. It's OK. But the point is, is that they're coming up with these products. They got a lot, there's lots more. They also have these products where they can hide their drugs. This is a can of Monster Energy Drink. Very popular with the kids. The top comes off. There's no energy drink. You can hide your drugs inside, right? This one's my very favorite. This is a bottle of Aquafina water. Everybody has a bottle of water everywhere you go. Not this bottle. This bottle is secret. Turn it, open it up, and you can hide your drugs right in the middle. Right? Now you're never going to look at a bottle of water the same again, I know. It's, uh, but it's crazy. And they make everything. From energy drink, 7-Up can, <coughs> opens up, and you can see it. And they have more and more and more of these products all over the place that they can hide. And they can see it. The last thing I want to touch on before we wrap up this segment is that there's another form of marijuana that's going around. It's called wax. This is the pot that is 75% THC. It actually comes in little chunks. 
The kids learn how to make it from the internet. They can boil it, they can make it, and these little chunks are almost like pure THC. And they take it in a glass pipe like this, and then they use like a blowtorch, heat it up, and do like they do with vapors. And they inhale the fumes. The kids call it dabbing. And dabbing is very popular because it's so powerful. Now, if you've got someone that you care about that has a problem with alcohol or drugs, as we get into the other stuff, or with pot or vaping, they might need help. They might need counseling. There's nothing wrong with getting help for your kid. A hotline, good hotline number for you is 888-20-SOBER. Uh, 888-20-SOBER. And you'll get a professional that'll help walk you through whatever you need. And it's no cost. And it can get help for anybody that you care about. 888-20-SOBER is the number. But it's important. Just because it's marijuana and you may not think it's a hard drug or a tough drug, it is. And it's dangerous, you know. So I want to thank all of you for watching this segment. Hopefully you got a better sense of vaping and you got a better sense of marijuana and uh, we'll be able to deal with it. So I want to thank you. I want to turn it back over to the command. All right. Hey, thank you, Mr. Mike Gimbel, uh, especially for taking the time today to provide us some insight and knowledge into what's going on in our communities uh, and potentially within our families. I know I personally, as a father, uh, am now smarter because of what you uh, have shown me here today. So thank you. Um, you know, unfortunately, where there's a will, there's a way, right? And uh, it was clearly evident today as we saw all of these common uh, gadgets being repurposed in, unfortunately, a negative uh, and dangerous way. Uh, I'll never look at these items away uh, again, especially the water, uh, in the same way again. You know, addiction uh, is more common than we think. Uh, there were approximately 20 million people in the United States over the age of 12 with an addiction in 2011. Unfortunately, only about 3 million at that time got help. Uh, the word treatment has been used in a negative connotation, and if a service member went into treatment, it usually meant that their career was over. However, through a robust communication campaign over the last 10 years and a methodical inculcation of leaders promoting treatment, we are changing the way treatment is viewed today. I am happy to report that over 18,000 service members have self-reported to Sud C here at Fort Meade uh, over the last couple years, improving themselves, their families, and our force as a whole. Uh, but we can still do better. Over 20 million Americans over the age of 12 have an addiction. 100 people die every day from drug overdoses. This rate has tripled in the past 20 years. <clears throat> 2.6 million people with addictions have a dependence on both alcohol and other drugs. Children and teens who use alcohol and drugs are more likely to have a substance use disorder. Opioids lead the charge for drug overdoses, but cocaine and stimulants still account for a significant portion of drug overdoses. Recovery is possible. Together, we can reduce the stigma of drug addiction, overdose, and recovery. Remember that you don't abuse drugs. You, you abuse your body with the drugs. You deserve a better life. If you have a problem, uh, as Mr. Gimbel said, reach out to the 1-800 number or call SUDC on the installation. They're here to help. Obviously, if you're having an overdose, call 911, please. Uh, this concludes today's segment on drugs. Thanks again uh, to Command Master Chief uh, for his uh, opening comments, Mr. Gimbel, for providing, with, providing us with a very amazing brief today. Uh, our ASAP team, led by Ms. Teresa Shipman, for all our efforts and the team's efforts to put all this together. Kudos, thank you. Uh, and then to all of you out there for your continued support to Fort Meade and the Garrison. Uh, our ASAP program office is cutting edge. We're trying to bring information to the public through this. Uh, and we really want to get information out so you know what to look for as family members, your service members uh, are potentially having a problem and they need some help. Stay safe, stay healthy, and make sure you keep social distancing during these unique times. Thank you. Good afternoon. 
Welcome to the Fort Meade Drug Alert Program. This program has four parts, and today you will view part one live through only online streaming. And the remaining parts will be pre-recorded. We're joined today by Mr. Mike Gimbel, a national drug expert, who will present to us today the dangers associated with alcohol misuse, prescription drug misuse, and illicit drug use. The objective of this four-part drug alert program is to help reduce the stigma that is so often associated with alcohol and drug addiction, and to encourage our community members that people can and do recover. Alcohol misuse and illicit drug use could become fatal if untreated and allowed to progress. Abuse of tobacco, alcohol, and illicit drugs is costly to our nation, exacting more than $740 billion annually in costs and related crime, lost work productivity, and health care. More than 67,000 Americans died from drug-induced overdose in 2018, including illicit drugs and prescription opioids. The figure above is the total number of U.S. drug overdose deaths involving any illicit or prescription drug uh, opioid drug use from 1999 through 2018. Drug overdose deaths rose from 38,000 in 2010 to 70,000 in 2017. So in just seven years, it rose that much. However, there was a significant decrease in 2018 to 67,000 deaths. And while it was a decrease, that is still 67,000 deaths too many. Some people are unaware of the risk that alcohol misuse and illicit drug use contributes to higher rates of violence, sexual assault, and suicides. Sometimes, drug and alcohol use is right in front of our eyes. We see it, but are unaware that it is happening. Our guest speaker will put an end to that. After this four-part program is complete, we all will have the insight to know what we see and to see what we know.